In this video, I'm going to show you how to contribute to open source projects as an Android developer. I think it's a very common kind of piece of advice that people get when they're trying to get jobs or, you know, improve their overall awareness as a developer, improve their their brand, their own self brand. Um, a lot of a lot of people give this advice. They say, you know, just get out there and contribute to open source projects. Uh, it's you know, it's that easy. Just go and do that. And although that is a good piece of advice, uh, I realize that a lot of people don't know how to do that. You know, like what is the practical steps you need to go, uh, you need to do to actually start contributing to open source projects. And it, it really is a simple thing, but there are things that you need to know how to use and how to do and kind of an overall process of how to go about this. So recently, someone on my Discord channel, my community Coding with Mitch Discord channel, they edited a repository for one of my courses. I'll actually show it to you on the screen here. So it's the local database caching course with a REST API, where I show you how to build a food recipe app that interacts with a REST API. And there's also a local database cache. So it caches that information from the network onto the phone itself. And I built this course using Java and I kind of asked my community, I said, since I've, since I've switched to Kotlin recently, it'd be cool if somebody took this, this repository and they converted it to Kotlin because that would be, you know, not only a good way to learn Kotlin, but it would be helpful to the rest of the community. They could see a Kotlin example of that Java application. So someone actually did this. They've, they've taken the repository and converted it to Kotlin. Now I haven't looked at it yet, but I was literally just about to look at it. You know, I, I created, I forked it. I was about to open it on my computer. Maybe Maybe do a little bit of a code review and I thought hey you know this would actually be a good opportunity to make a video because I bet a lot of people don't know how to do this how to you know take someone else's code from github open it on their computer and then maybe submit some changes to the author of the author of that repository and say you know maybe you could do it this way or that way submit submit code change code changes and in other words uh, contribute to their repository so that is what I'm going to show you in this video we are going to check out his project um, from, from his GitHub repository. We're gonna open it locally on my computer. I'm going to submit some changes to it, just some random changes. And then, uh, so then he'll be able to see them on his end, on his GitHub, and either accept those changes or deny those changes. Uh, basically, in general, I'm just gonna show you the overall process of how you would contribute to an open source project, uh, practically speaking. So the things that you need to know before going into this video is you need to have Git installed on your computer, you know, just, I'm not going to show you how to do it. All you need to do is, you know, Google how to install Git if you're using Windows or Mac or whatever. You need to have Android Studio, obviously. And that, that should be it. That, that should be everything you need. So let's, uh, let's get started. Let's take a look at his repository here. So what you need to do is go to his repository. Make sure that you are logged into Git. I'm going to click the fork button over here on the top right. Uh, it's going to do some things. Basically, what this is doing is it's taking his repository and it, it's making a copy of it in uh, in, in my name. So it's like a cop exact copy of his code, uh, but now I can I can access it and make changes to it. So now I'm going to click clone or download over here. I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to go to Android Studio, and um, you can see I already had it checked out, and I stopped myself when I started to uh, make this video. Uh, so ignore all these repositories. These are just my repositories. I'm going to click check out from version control, go to git, and now I'm going to paste in that URL and get get that repository. And then Android Studio is going to ask me if I want to open it. Obviously, I want to open it because we're going to take a look at it and potentially make some changes. Well, I'm definitely going to make some changes, just some random stuff and show you how to uh, submit those changes to him, the, the repository owner, and then he can decide whether he wants to uh, commit those changes to the real repository. So here I have his repository open on my computer now, and I can take a look at the code. So, um, you know, I, I literally haven't looked at this at all. So I don't, I'm not planning on making any actual changes or anything like that, but I am going to go into one of the activities. Let's just choose, you know, recipe list activity. And I'll just, um, I'll show you how to make changes and then submit those changes to him for review. And then he can either accept them or decline them. So I'm just going to go into the on create method here in recipe list activity. And I'm going to add a little comment here say, this is a test comment. So that's all this is going to be is just a test. So just writing a random comment there. Now, what generally what you want to do, it's giving me some warnings actually up here. Looks like it doesn't have this resource class, which is odd because it's right there. So it's probably just a random warning. I'm going to ignore it. Probably when I build the project, it'll be fine. 
So anyway, back back to what we were doing here. So generally what you want to do is you want to create a branch off of the main branch and then make some changes to it and then submit those changes to whoever is going to review them. So on my computer, I have a, a short, short key set for creating a new branch, which is control B. But what you'll have to do if you don't have a short key is you'll have to go down to the branches down here and go and click on new branch and then we can create a branch. I'm just going to call this test dash branch and then click OK. So now I've created a new branch. I've added some changes to this branch, which is this comment right here. Now um, on my computer, again, I have a short shortcut um, for submitting the changes of this of this uh, new code change. So it's control K, which will then open up this dialog right here to submit these code changes or commit the changes. But if you don't have a short key shortcut, then you'll have to go up to I believe it's VCS and go to commit. So yeah, it's control K by default. And then you can write some comments for your commit. So I'm saying this is just a test. This is just a test. And then I'm going to hit commit. It's going to ask me if there's any uh, conflicts or errors. I'm going to say yes, sure, let's commit this anyway. And now that I've committed that I want to I want to uh, submit this code to him for review. So before I actually submit it to him, I could also push it to my local repository, or sorry, my my remote repository. So because remember when we forked it, uh, what it did was it created a copy of his repository under my name. So if I wanted to submit the changes that I just created to that copy of, of his repository that I own now, I can then push those changes to my remote repository. So if I came up here, um, so my, my shortcut is control shift K to push the commits, but I don't, I, I don't think that will be yours. So you might have to go to Git and look for push right here. So click that. You want to select that new branch. So that new commit, you can see there's the branch that I created, that test branch. Then there's that commit that I just created. So I'm going to click on push. Now that's going to submit the changes to my repository that I copied from him. So I technically still own that. He's not going to see anything yet. But when this is done, so now that's done, I'm going to go back to Git. I'm going to refresh. I don't even need to refresh it. You can see right there, a new test branch was created. And if I click that, it would show the changes that I, I have made. So if I go to source, go to main, go to the repository, go to recipe list activity. Notice that now this comment right here, this is a test comment, is on this branch. But if I go back to the master branch, that will not be there. So if I go there, there's no comment because I only added it to that one branch. So that's great. That's that's how to get a project, make some changes, create a branch, commit the changes, push those changes to your remote. Um, but now how do, how do I submit those changes to him so that he can decide to whether add it to his code uh, kind of permanently. So what you want to do is you want to create a push or a, um, sorry, a uh, pull request. So you go up to VCS up here, go to Git, go down to create pull request. That's going to do, it's going to load up a dialogue. Um, and then you can give a description for what you did if you want to. Uh, I could say, I'm just doing some testing and <laughs> making a video of it. Sure, it doesn't really matter. But this, what this is going to do is it's going to submit this to him for review. So if I click OK, wait a second here because it's going doing some uh, doing some loading. It says successfully created a pull request. And now I can take a look at that pull request on his repository. So I'm going back to Git. I'm going to go to his repository. Actually, that was mine. I'm actually going to press back, press back. Actually, I just need to click up here. So this is this is now the repository that I cloned initially, his repository. I can go up here, pull requests, and you can see that there's a number one here. And there is that test branch that I just created. So if I click this, it says, uh, you know, there's the comment. This is just a test. I'm just doing this. I'm just doing some testing and making a video of it. Uh, and then you can take a look at the commits and you can see what what I actually did. So if we look at this and we look at the code, you can see that there is the code that I added. So he he now has the opportunity to look at this, review it. He can give me comments, give me feedback, or he can just merge this to his his master branch. So that's it. In a nutshell, that that's how you contribute to open source, open source um, repositories on GitHub. Uh, at least uh, with respect to Android development. So now, now after learning this, I encourage all of you to take a look at his repository, Andrew Andos, Andros, I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Take a look at his repository because he's converting a Java project to a Kotlin project. So all of you go check it out. Do the same thing I did, fork it, get it in Android Studio, review his code, see if he did everything correctly because he's, he's learning Kotlin, I believe, and uh, create some pull requests. And I'm sure you're going to overwhelm him with all of these pull requests, but I'm sure he'll also appreciate the feedback. 
So that that is going to be it for this video. And the last thing I want to do before I end this is I want to talk about the newest courses that I have on my website. Those of you who don't follow me on YouTube or follow my content on my website, I am an Android developer. I create Android development courses. Usually uh, the topics center around Jetpack and architecture and things like that. Uh, my newest two courses that I just released, the first one is Model View Intent Architecture. So I show you an introduction to how to use Model View Intent Architecture, which is kind of, I would say it's my favorite architecture now. And for those of you who are familiar with MVVM, it's kind of like a natural evolution to MVVM. It's very, very similar to MVVM. It's basically MVVM with some added features. So it's a really cool course, shows you some really cool practical skills. I encourage you to check that one out. So if you want to check it out, you can just go to my homepage, click on Model of you intent right here that'll take you to the course you can read the description watch the course demo and check it out and see what uh, if that is something that might interest you alternatively the second newest course that i have is called powerful android apps with jetpack architecture this course is actually still in progress and there is an app there's a ton of content in this course it's not a beginner course by any means here let me just read out some of the things that we'll be learning kotlin mvi architecture live data and view models navigation components which is the new way to navigate with fragments on android the room persistence library coroutines retrofit 2 dagger 2 and a rest api integration from a real server that i built for you guys to use it's kind of like a sandbox for you guys to use so it's pretty cool uh, if you want to learn more about that you can just go to the course page check out the demo and i'm actively creating lectures for this so every you know every day basically i'm working on this and i'm producing lectures as as i finish them so you can take a look at the demo take a look at the description down here um, and if you want to know kind of what people are saying about my content you can click on more go to testimonials and you can read some testimonials for people who have taken my courses and what they thought of them so now that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully this little example of how to use Git and contribute to open source projects was helpful to you. I will see you in that next video.